Hello. Hello again. Hello again. Today's topic is quite a broad one and difficult to speak about without getting totally different emotions, like the positive ones and the negative ones. Yeah. Um, I get more negatives, unfortunately. <laughs> yes, because I think that the, the more uh, the more conscious we are, uh, the more those negative emotions we have, yeah. especially when we are in this area of design, when we make products and design things to be manufactured. So basically we are these people who make um, planet Earth more cluttered with products. <laughs> but um, what's the topic? The topic is sustainability. So um beginning with the consciousness the thing that people are more and more conscious and concerned about planet earth um, this term is i believe one of the, of the most important things to at least be familiar with um so that this term is not only a word in your language but also an approach on how to understand products and how to understand product life cycle. True. Mm. And uh, I, I will try not to jump into those negative fields. Me neither. I, I want to man maintain some level of hope and maybe uh, inspire someone to, to create uh, stuff in a more sustainable manner. Uh, because I believe that uh, we creative people are uh, more um, sensitive towards those subjects and that can be a, a very good quality in uh, business talk and maybe business modeling and developing new uh, new products. Yes, because uh, where, where we are sp speaking of big words like uh, sustainability. Saving planet. Saving planet. Yeah. Uh, the business is... Uh, most involved in this because we cannot design in the void so to speak so we have to design products that can be sold or bought by people but still we have to take care of our planet okay mm, maybe let's jump into the phase where there is no product at all it's just an idea so how can we plan a product that is as sustainable as possible? Because sustainability is something really difficult to, to achieve fully. Achieve fully. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I believe that the beginning of the project and maybe that pre-design phase of it uh, is the best time to think about sustainability and set up uh, those maybe smaller uh, goals uh, towards achieving uh, as big level of it uh, as possible uh, and I think we can uh, talk a little bit about a few different strategies that can be ap applied uh, in uh, in design and I mean by it uh, for example serviceability um, the number of components used in a future product the use of mono materials and uh, planning to use uh, reusable material and even a um, subject as big as uh, designing the whole life cycle of a product. So um, to start from the beginning, the okay. serviceability, it's something that even a European Commission uh, promotes in a way, because uh, from, I believe this year, we, uh, we or maybe the producers are um, made responsible for creating or, or implementing to the market products that are able to be uh, serviced, fixed, and to uh, minimize the risk of one single-use product, I would say. Single-use, I mean that I use something for like half of a year and then uh, it gets broke and it cannot be fixed and it has to be thrown away. So this is something that uh, we should avoid. So we as designers and engineers, we should think about how to, uh, for example, make the access into the um, 
most important parts of the uh, of the object of the device uh, possible for someone who is competent enough to fix it. So this is the strategy that um, influences not only the looks of the final product, uh, but also um, makes us think about the mechanical uh, uh, mechanical uh, parts as well. Okay. Uh, um... I would like to ask you a, a little bit more in detail about the okay. serviceability because I believe that serviceability is possible within bigger objects like dishwashers, True. Um, some home appliances that are big enough mm -hmm. to place components that are interchangeable. Okay. Um, but how about the mobile phones, for example? Uh, I believe that it is important to think that not not the user is not the only responsible person for servicing stuff. Uh, so we have to uh, apply serviceability in a way that will be understood and useful for uh, someone who is an expert, for example, in fixing phones. And uh, even switch from uh, gluing parts together towards screwing parts together, even very small ones, uh, can be helpful in that manner. Yeah, or planning not to destroy yeah. the thing after while dismantling it. While dismantling, you can have a glue that can be um, that that can be uh, erased yeah. or or removed from uh, from the bond, and then you can open the part, still repair it, and rebond it yeah. once again. So so it's not that uh, only the big parts are. Mm, possible to be to be serviced, but you have to special tooling to yeah exactly. Uh, it's like a to, different thinking to repair the, the to repair the product. Okay, I believe that there is one other thing uh, with European regulations. Something that this year happened. It's the USB Type C that is uh, once again once in again <laughs> in favor. So it should be implemented in all the mobile devices uh, so that it, no device without USB Type-C can be sold. Uh, so that's also towards sustainability because of the peripherals, I guess. Am I correct? Yeah, that is a, it's a good point. Uh, and I believe that uh, will also help us to maybe have less objects in a home. We will need less uh, chargers, for example. Uh, and that's also uh, a good point, a good um, step towards uh, having less cluttered uh, homes and less uh, production in a, a big picture. Okay, so th that's quite positive. Yeah. <laughs> so we are still on the positive uh, side of, of we sustainability. Can do this so let's keep, let's not get keep this, uh, this, this good mood. Uh, yeah. um, okay. To keep this good mode, uh, we should focus more on the product development because it's okay. easy to make a sophisticated product, but it's really hard to make a simple product. True. <laughs> uh, so, as an example, uh, design for less parts. Yeah. What is this all about? Creating as little uh, components as possible uh, might be challenging in regards of manufacturing, for example, because sometimes it is uh, simpler to create, to produce, uh, for example, four simple parts that will uh, at the end be assembled to be a housing for, I don't know, a TV remote or uh, even a TV itself. But it requires more skill and more engineering hours uh, into uh, cut down this number of uh, of pieces uh, down. So uh, what I understand is that you have to spend a lot of time to make one piece instead of two, for example. Yeah. Um, so that this time will be eventually saved in the future. Uh, when thinking about manufacturing, yeah, that's correct. Assembly, yeah, and then serviceability as well, and sometimes even material because uh, you can be uh, sometimes you can be more efficient uh, with a smaller amount of uh, material in uh, this strategy. Okay, um, I like examples 
and I believe that we should maybe deliver one example about uh, as little comp components as possible. I've already um, searched the, the, the web for, for this okay. and uh, found a component that is uh, a nozzle for, um, for the mixer. For, for for the household uh, blender. Okay. The the nozzle was before the the next manufacturing possibilities like three D printing. The nozzle was made out of six different parts, and now with three D printing capabilities, um, just as an example of mm -hmm. using new technologies into real world yeah. um, problems uh, solving. Uh, this part it now comes within one single part, so it's easy to assemble because there is no assembly. Yeah, uh, it's it, easier to control the process of manufacturing as well because you are taking care of a one part instead of six, as you mentioned. And that's what I I wanted to to to, to take from this uh, from this sentence: as little <laughs> components as possible yeah. makes uh, the product easier to maintain. Yeah. Okay, so when we are speaking of lowering the number of parts, how about materials? Because we are focused on more and more sophisticated products. Mm -hmm. We are focused on strength. We are fo focused on all these aspects of new technologies that are enabling us something that is not that was not possible before, mm, like a carbon fiber with a resin mm -hmm. that make light and strong parts. Yeah. But this is not something that we are going to talk about because yeah. sustainability is not about a uh, word yeah. <laughs> about uh, about composites. Uh, composites, yeah. How about materials? Um, I believe that a big part of, of answering that question would, would be mentioning that uh, the waste management is really important mm -hmm. and to think about the future of the products that once are functioning and in mint condition, but at the end we need to do something with them when they meets their end. So uh, we need to manage the materials we are using mm -hmm. and managing uh, composites is really hard because uh, sometimes there are s those uh, totally different uh, materials coming into creating one composite are really hard to separate and to manage in different ways because you cannot uh, use again the resin that is used for the carbon fiber comp composite and you cannot uh, resource that fibers that it's still there and maybe it could be uh, reused again in some way. So uh, this is the big problem. So a good example would be the packaging industry uh, because for example the pet plastic bottle it's not the worst choice. I think uh, worse, than, worse than that is to uh, choose the uh, tetra pack which is the sandwich of very different materials that are hard to, to separate at the end. Okay that's a good example and um, regarding the PET bottles you mentioned uh, there's there are several uses of these bottles after they are bottles for example uh, these technical clothing uh, like polyesters yeah uh, are made out of these bottles yeah mm. so another example on that these bottles are not so bad yeah uh, they are to... easier to control what to do, do with them next so uh, that's a, a, a good aim a good goal to aim for okay so to take a lesson from monomaterials and being more sustainable as a person as a individual who is um, more and more conscious about this maybe can you tell us something about what to look for in in products maybe day-to-day -day, uh, use products like uh, trays for 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 food what to look at when buying product that is uh, there is written that it's eco packaging but what should it mean in reality mm, i think it is good to aim towards uh, packaging for example, that uh, 
are easy to recognize. Mm, I mean, like those PET bottles instead of Tetra Packs, or maybe switching towards materials that we are certain that can be recycled. For example, glass packaging or um, metal cans. These are stuff that are classically well managed even in our part of Europe, which is not um, because a good level of recycling materials doesn't happen everywhere, unfortunately. Uh, another thing is to look for, um, even if, you, if we have a packaging made out of a few materials, um, we should look for stuff that are easy to separate. Mm -hmm. For example, it is uh, easy to remove the paper part and the plastic part and etc. Yeah, mm, and uh, I think it's a, also a good aim to look for uh, stuff that circulate on the market, for example, plastic, uh, for example, um, glass beer bottles instead of uh, aluminum cans, because we know we can uh, bring those bottles to the shop and they will circle again uh, in the market. Okay, a good, a good example of how to look at the products, yeah. at products um, in day-to-day -day use, of course, because I think that this is the most uh, important thing because we, we produce a lot of trash out of day-to-day -day use products, not the products that are uh, going to be for years with us. But still, these products, these electronics devices that we are mostly focused on mm -hmm. can uh, have the same function regarding how to separate it. So yeah. I believe that they should be described as, as good as day-to-day -day use products. Mm -hmm. Mm, they should have at least a strategy in product design on how these components might be separated and then reused or recycled or yeah. or damaged. So, so-called damage control. Yeah. Um, okay. And this term has its definition, and it's called the end of product life cycle. Yeah. Um, can you bring an example on how current companies that are already established on the market thought about it and brought something that you should that, that, that you think it's not reusable that is single use and you throw it away how to make it possible that this product mm -hmm. is currently sustainable more sustainable Okay, so um, uh, one example comes to my mind, uh, and I think that would be uh, Brita filters, because in some countries they have a strategy to uh, resourcing the used filters back, so you can send them back and the Brita will uh, deal with uh, the waste instead of putting them on the landfills and forgetting about them forever. So, um, okay, this is not something that is easy to separate, yes, like Tetra Pak, yeah. but for example Brita has its idea on how to make use out of it, but you have just to send the filter back. Yeah. Okay. Easy. So all the things that we have already said sound easy, like planning for monomaterial, uh, planning mm -hmm. to have less parts because it's brilliant sure. idea to have less parts, uh, less things to be broken. Um, possibility to be service for service or serviceability, um, using materials that are already recycled. So, so not only reusable materials, but also using the materials that were already on the market, um, once or twice. So it's, it all sounds easy, but why for some reason all these things cannot happen easily in a product why mm. sustainability is difficult yeah that's the um that's the question for the decision makers <laughs> to be honest and we as a designer are rarely decision makers we are somewhere in between the all the knowledge we've mentioned before and the people who uh, are trying to make money, put new products on the market mm -hmm. and implement them. 
And with a more sustainable approach, there are some challenges because the uh, staff I mentioned before uh, need sometimes more engineering hours like that serviceability and uh, maybe different structural approach while designing stuff out of the recycled materials because they have different qualities. And that time costs money, uh, which is the decision it's hard for, to make for uh, people implementing the products or trying to implement the product. I have an idea to talk about um, with this, what you have said already, that the business, the people who want to introduce some products into the market know that if they manufacture something more expensive, they probably won't sell this product and it won't be a success. So they don't want to waste money. Yeah. Or take risk. Or take risks. So I've got an idea um, that I think we look from the wrong perspective. That there is a paradigm in our world that humanity and people like us like sustainability because we tend to like our lives mm -hmm. and like to be on a healthy planet but still want to buy cheaper products uh, with great quality with great quality with Service. great surface finishing with all these blinky aspects of new product that comes within a fully packaged uh, mm, bright uh, covered with a foil yeah. box and you get this product you you have this emotion of taking something brand new made just for you with a perfect finish with all the hundreds of of, of pages of uh, manual that you won't read and there are a lot of things that we are used to yeah and people who sell these products know that we are used to this we are as designers know that this is not that right way but I think that this is the difficulty that we have to face. Yeah, it is a sort of a clash because uh, one side is uh, scared of new thing and the other side is scared of uh, taking the risks. And it's like, it's hard to, to balance uh, the both sides, I guess. So, so, so maybe, maybe the answer to this question, why it is difficult to make sustainable product is that no one nowadays, no one wants to invest their time and money into changing this paradigm of having the perfect product. Yeah, that's a good point, yeah. Okay. Um, so if we would like to speak about these compromises that we have, mm -hmm. um, do you think that there are some things that we can cover and uh, still they will be understandable by all of us? Not I think only designers. So. I think so. Uh, one of the examples is uh, uh, using the recycled materials because it affects the surface finish. So uh, uh, agreeing to use the recycled materials, we are agreeing to have, for example, uh, more dim, not as glossy surface finish of the plastic products we buy. That's one of the uh, one of the examples, I would say. Do you think that, because we were mentioning 3D printing somehow, yeah. um, is this the unicorn of technologies that will finally or eventually um, be the one technology used for manufacturing? So that's, you know, all these things that taking from six parts to one part, mm -hmm. um, making parts just for the demands and so on. Uh, is it so cool or not? Unfortunately not. <laughs> um, if it would, it'd probably be more common uh, in production, uh, but uh, it can brought a lot of benefits and maybe uh, thin up or thin out a little bit the mass production and mass overproduction that is happening nowadays. Uh, because 3D printing can be a great tool in mass customization, which is a uh, way of manufacturing on demand in a way. So you are ordering objects, you wait for them and uh, you receive them and you, you're receiving the uh, very attractive product, I would say, 
for, for example, some glass frames or uh, shoe insoles are made with that technology, uh, but uh, you don't participate in creating the uh, whole big surrounding of uh, different products that conventionally comes with uh, such orders. Okay, okay. So it's more like uh, opening new possibilities. Yeah. Um, but not uh, not closing the possibilities that, that, that we already have. Yeah. So it is possible that 3D printing will be Great not help. sustainable as well. Yeah. Um, nice. and, and we would like to emphasize that. Yeah. <laughs> well, so far so good. Uh, we've covered some topics about the um, product planning. Uh, mm -hmm. the product life cycle. Um, how about talking about some concepts that are part of sustainability, um, but should be covered more to be more understood by all of us um, so that we can be uh, conscious, we can bring something as people towards being more sustainable as humanity. Mm, so maybe let's start with uh, something that is rather a negative one. It's called the greenwashing. How to describe it and how to find that this greenwashing happens? Um, well, the problem with that, it's a quite cynical one because uh, some companies or so marketing strategies uh, are using that term of being ecological, being sustainable, being planet friendly to uh, sell more products because uh, they notice that it is attractive from so some sort of clients, especially those who would like to be uh, more sustainable in their lives. So um, this is the term that uh, it's used for describing situation when some product has a big green leaf, leaf for example, selling an planet friendly, mm -hmm. but it happens to not be, or it happens to be just uh, one small piece of that product is really sustainable and rest of it, it's very conventional and uh, not planned to be sustainable at all. Okay. Uh, can you recall any example of, uh, of this greenwashing thing? I'd rather not, but <laughs> I believe that uh, every person who is interested in such subjects becomes more conscious and uh, more eager to maybe check the sources, check what uh, what the, each company means by uh, claiming to be sustainable and make uh, better decisions, more suitable for their idea of uh, what real sustainability should be. Okay, so a lesser in, uh, lesson to learn, uh, definitely, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. to check. Uh, if it's true, what's written on, or what's advertised. Yeah. Okay. Mm, another thing is something that was brought by new technologies, emerging technologies, including 3D printing, of course, but uh, not only. It's called uh, mass customization. Mm, how can we look at mass customization so that the perspective is more sustainable because mass customization is not only about sustainability but how to look from the perspective of sustainability mm, i think that um, it has some qualities that can be uh, very appealing uh, and uh, very useful in sus more sustainable approach for example mass customization can help to um, minimize or make the um, supply chain shorter because it doesn't require big factory plants. It requires only a good 3D printing hub, for example. Okay. Uh, so uh, we can manufacture more locally and those objects we are ordering are not traveling the whole world. So it is always uh, a useful uh, situation. Um, and that brings another term. It's called <laughs> carbon footprint. Yeah. Another I guess. So that um, all these things are interconnected and um, I would like all and of that's us, why it's so hard, I actually. think, to, to, to remember that this term is not a single term that is, uh, mm, that is in the vacuum. 
it's a term that is connected with all these... Intertwined with different yes. situations, different okay. uh, aspects of manufacturing and delivering so, products. So the su supply chain um, that is uh, thousand or, or the supply vendor that is thousands of kilometers off the destination yeah. is also something uh, wrong in terms of sustainable design because True. we should think of l more local production yeah and maybe smaller facilities rather than one big uh, offshore uh, okay. source of products okay um worth mentioning that uh, i i believe mm. but about the customization what are the benefits for for a regular consumer for example maybe let's leave the sustainability I let's think, okay jump into the mass customization and its benefits for for us Okay, so I believe that mass customization uh, can be really attractive, uh, not only that sustainable aspect you, you've mentioned, uh, but also because it can uh, bring us some products uh, easier. For example, we can uh, order highly customized insoles for shoes, uh, order them and have them quite, quite fast. It's uh, happening because um, the companies that do that collect orders from uh, for very different geometry of those insoles from each person, which is very um, ergonomically correct, uh, very suitable for uh, your feet and stuff like that. Um, they collect those orders, they print the whole volume of the print, so they don't uh, waste uh, any uh, material along the, along the way or they don't create new expensive and uh, material consuming tooling for, mm -hmm. for manufacturing them uh, and they send them to their uh, to, to people who ordered them so it is like uh, having your very own uh, especially for you product without creating whole big uh, surrounding uh, of uh, factory plant for example so it's a win-win platform that uh, can deliver product just for you yeah and without any tooling needed so that the manufacturer gets rid all of the uh, facilities uh, just as it can be a simple software a platform that can yeah. gathering the data from from user sent to the manufacturer that is providing services for different uh, those kind of manufacturers and you as a customer benefit from it like you have a product in days instead yeah. of months uh, and have this product personalized for you yeah and that personalization is a i think a huge uh, gain because it's very accessible and it's not as expensive as it uh, was for example five or ten years ago okay but still a pretty narrow implementation of this um, of this can happen because True. of the nature of 3d printed parts True. Uh, they cannot embed electronics or yes. any other mechanical me me mechanisms inside but yes it's it's a matter of a future we've got another term that is i think the most comprehensive one uh, in between those terms that we have already mentioned because it's called the circular economy. Um, in comparison to linear the economy, which we are existing, existing now, now yeah. um, what are the differences? What are the assumptions of the circular economy? And of course, we would like to hear about the examples okay. if it's happening already. Um, circular economy, uh, it's a different approach than the linear economy we are living now because we are living in a situation when companies design, manufacture, implement uh, products to the market and for getting them uh, as fast as possible, I mean when the buyer buys them, for example. But in the circular economy, you not only do all the stuff I've mentioned, manufacture and implement to the market, but also you are planning the end life of the product to create as much uh, as, as to uh, create as little uh, waste as possible and to gain as much from the, uh, for example, products that are finishing their lives. Uh, so, for example, you um, collect all the broken, uh, for example, phones from the market when you are as 
living in a circular economy situation or leading the company in a circular way. And you check what pieces of those phones you can use again, for example, while fixing different phones. Uh, you are checking uh, uh, all the batteries, if they're okay, if you had to utilize them, and you are very responsible regarding all of the elements. That's the okay. very so, short so summary. You are working towards less waste. Yeah, uh, in, as little in as possible. Yeah. Okay, you are trying, because circular economy in in a manner of 100% reusable of all the things is, I believe, not possible. Uh, it maybe is, yet. Maybe yet, but... Um, uh, the... Regarding the all environment that we have. Yeah. Um, we have to think of uh, energy as well here yeah. in circular economy because when we are using fossil fuels, I believe that it's not towards uh, circular economy yeah. because it's it's linear. Yeah, we use the resources that and, we have, and, it, and, it, and it's used. Yeah, and it's used, and yeah. it's uh, and there's a waste. Anymore. Yeah, uh, of course, some some products or byproducts of of some technologies are okay. Yeah. like uh, burning hydrogen produces water, <laughs> but uh, burning coal uh, means uh, carbon dioxide. So it's not a good gas for, for the planet. But still, if we have this gas, we can do something with this gas, like uh, pressurize it and store this gas, not to be in the atmosphere, but have it sort of bottled. Yeah. Yeah. And this is these are steps towards circular economy because it's not only producing the waste but also taking this waste and reusing it. Reusing uh, to refurbish the elements, uh, to refurbish the products that are already on the market, to uh, manage the waste when it happens some, to okay. maybe uh, looking for resources in those stuff that we considered waste at the time. So. It's like, for example, uh, maybe using the housing of uh, old products to create a recyclable material and so on and so forth. So it's like um, working with what you already have for 100% rather than just uh, going the easiest way possible. Okay, so maybe to sum up, um, I think that I've heard it. I didn't invent this uh the sentence uh that a trash for someone is a treasure for somebody else yeah <laughs> so that the circular economy is all about it that you can produce yeah, you can find value something everywhere. valuable if you look at it from a right perspective so even a byproduct of burning the coal might be a treasure for some company yeah. uh, that might uh, take benefit out of it. So to, to, to recap all of our terms and all this, these things about sustainability, um, maybe we should uh, sum up with a sentence that everybody is responsible for sustainability. Sure. Um, that not only designers, not only manufacturers are the people who should uh, take care or, or should care about this, yeah. this term because uh, without people, without uh, a regular man consumer that is, uh, that is living on this planet, um, sustainability cannot happen because we have to change our habits, we have to yeah. change our beliefs approach. and approach even to modeling businesses not only to being a consumer okay because once we change this approach the business will change because they will have to face different challenges because people won't buy products that are not sustainable and sure. that's the economy that's yeah. that's how it works so uh thank you for that thank you uh I hope we uh, manage to maintain to be hopeful. For, for yeah, yeah, thank you for talking about difficult things because mm -hmm. it's it's not that easy. Uh, we sh we we could talk about um, the darker aspects as well, but yeah, yeah. yeah but it, but instead we could talk about beautiful shiny products that are 
um, later uh, a mass uh, mass laying on the ground and uh, um, ruin our planet. So this is not the perspective we want. Yeah. Uh, so I think that it was worth talking about it and uh, hopefully there was a lot of information for all of our listeners. Thank you. Thank you.